Shalom in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are your favorite ex-Muslims, spreading Christianity, Shania, Shino, Naomi, with our brother, Sam Shimon. Welcome all. Yes, thank you, Shania. Welcome back, all our lovely Somali Christian TV family. It's always joy to have you. Um, we hope that you are all well and blessed. If you are new to us, if you are new to our channel, we ask you to subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you will not miss uh, any future videos from Somali Christian TV. As you see, we have uh, our brother, uh, Sam Shimon, who will go with us through uh, uh, the topic of uh, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So our brother Sam, welcome to Somali Christian TV. Well, thank you for having me. Let me just ask the God and Father of the Lord Jesus yeah. to bless this session, <clears throat> fill us with the Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus Christ. And we ask the Father that his son, the Lord Jesus, will increase in our hearts, sin and throne upon our hearts, and that he'll sanctify us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. And anoint our words to speak truth without error, to interpret scripture correctly, to recall scriptures perfectly, and obey the scriptures, love the scriptures, live out the scriptures, the Holy Bible, the word of our God, for the glory of Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. You are the Son of God. Holy Spirit, we love you. We depend on you. Give us the health and the holiness we need to serve your eternal companion, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus. Bless the body of Christ and convict Muslims. In Jesus' name we pray. Yahovah, Father, Son, Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Uh, just to one of two things. I know last week uh, Hideous Wood was on. You had Hideous Wood. <laughs> and I saw, and you know, maybe God heal me because uh, you should not ever be envious because that's a sin. I saw over 400 people watching him on your yeah. station. <laughs> And then on top of that, on top of that, of all the pictures you could choose of me, you chose a picture where I look like Shamu the killer whale. Why? <laughs> Why? I thought you loved me. Just because we I've been. We love you. To... We love you. We love you. That's Just because why. I've been, been mean to Naomi doesn't mean you punish me. <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> it's Naomi who chose yeah. this picture. <laughs> she said that's the beautiful picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> vengeance is, Naomi, vengeance is the Lord, not your sister. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a good way to end the series on the Old Testament. Yes. Because now the Old Testament, we're going to show what the Hebrew Bible says about the Spirit. So glory to Jesus Christ. You have now multiple part in the series proving the Trinity from the Old Testament. Maybe Amen. in the future. In the distant future, we'll come to the New Testament. But this is a very befitting way to conclude the series in the Old Testament by talking about the Spirit of God. Because we have to demonstrate by the grace of Jesus Christ that the New Testament, consistent with the Old Testament, and that it's yeah. built on the foundation of the Old Testament, so that what it says about the Spirit <clears throat> is not something that goes against the Old Testament, but is established on the teaching of the Hebrew Bible, that what we believe about the Holy Spirit is what the prophets believe about the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, I'm going to demonstrate that for the glory of Christ. So whenever you're ready, we can begin. Yes. Yes. Ready. That's a good brother, by the way. Kyle Meyer, Myers, good brother in the Lord Jesus. You have a good, good group of people, brothers, yeah. sisters who love Jesus Christ. And may the Lord increase them for his glory. Amen. Spirit of the Old Testament. Spirit of the Old Testament. Now, it is important. Sorry, my coffee is getting ready. So sorry for the noise. It is important that you guys go back and watch the first part in the series because when you listen to something once, you will forget most of what you hear. This is why God designed us. Creatures are repetition. We need to hear something over and over again, and then by the power of the Holy Spirit, we understand it, we absorb it, we recall it. Yeah. If you go back to the first session in the series on the Old Testament, we went very in-depth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And I showed in that session that there, the Spirit of God is a person. By person, let me explain what I mean again, because we got to hear things repetitively. When I say the Spirit is a person, to someone who, who speaks English and thinks in English, person in their mind means a human being, flesh and blood, has a physical body. No. That's not the definition. So I want the Christians to understand that when we... Speak of the persons of God. By person, we do not mean the Holy Spirit has a physical body. He has flesh and blood. He's a human being. 
He's limited to time, space, and place. Because if you go back to that first session where I went in depth, the Bible tells us that God is spirit by nature. And what that means is because he's spirit and the creator of time, space, and place, God by nature is bodiless. God by nature is shapeless. God by nature is formless. That's who God is. He is bodiless. He is shapeless, formless, because he created all shapes, all form, all time, all space. So think with me here, because I really have to help you by the grace of God's spirit. And if I'm successful, glory to the Holy Spirit for his illumination. If God created time, that means he exists before time. If God created matter, that means he created space and place. That means he exists before space and place. So that means God existed when there was no time, no space, nor place. That means by nature, he doesn't need space. He doesn't need place to exist. Everything that's created, everything that's created needs space and place to exist. See, I'm existing in, in space. I'm occupying a place. So are you, because that's the very nature of being created. To be created means you are bound to time, space, and place. If God created time, space, and place, that means he is spaceless, he is placeless and timeless. But once he creates the creation, he can then <clears throat> interact with creation. He can then appear in creation in visible shape. And in the person of Jesus actually become man and take on a human nature. And that human nature, that physical body, be bound to time, space, and place. So yeah. make sure that you repeat this in your mind. God by nature is spaceless, placeless, timeless. But once he creates time, space, and place... He can then interact with his creation. He can appear visibly in a shape, in a form, so his creatures can see him. And then in Jesus, he actually took on the nature of a man. And in that nature as a man, he's now bound to time, space, and place as a man. As God, he's over creation. So keep that in mind. Very important. You rewatch these sessions until all of this sinks in. So that said, when I say the spirit is a person, He's not a person like you and I that occupies time, space, and place and has a body. No. He is the eternal spirit who exists before time, space, and place. So he's shapeless, bodiless, spaceless, placeless. So then what do we mean when we say the Father is a person, the Son is a person, the Holy Spirit is a person? By person, I mean the Holy Spirit speaks, can be spoken to is aware he aware he's aware that he exists and he he's aware that he exists as the spirit and he's aware that he's not the father and he's not the son and he's aware that the father and the son exist in union with him yeah. and he has fellowship he has emotions he has a volition a will a mind that's what we mean that's all we mean yeah. so make sure you understand terms now in other languages they use different terms for example in my Assyrian language, because I'm Assyrian, not from Syria, I'm Assyrian, son, son of Ashur, and we speak Syriac, which is from Aramaic. When we say one God, three persons, we say in my mother tongue, Kha'ala, La, Kunume, Kunume. So the word we use for persons is Kunuma, singular, Kunume, plural which doesn't exactly correspond to the word person. See, each language yeah. will come up with their own terminology to describe the three persons of the Godhead. In English, we say person. Mm. Now, so others would also use the term three eternal relationships. What do we mean? The Father is in relationship with the Son. The Son is in relationship with the Spirit. The Spirit is in relationship with the Father. So these three are in relationship, in communion, and in love with one another. But for that to be so, that means they have awareness. The Father is aware. That's my Son. That's my Spirit. And so he's in love with them and has fellowship with them. Same with the Son and the Spirit. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So with that said, what proof do we have? What proof do we have from the Hebrew Bible? This Spirit is a person, not simply God's power or presence, and that he's truly God. And he possesses the attributes of God. Well, I already explained the meaning of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 in the first part of the series. So I won't repeat most of the arguments, but we'll really quickly look at Genesis 1 verses 1 and 2 real quickly. 
but you need to go back to that first session because I went really in depth. So here I'm just going to refresh your memories and touch on a few points in Genesis 1 and see what the Hebrew Bible before the New Testament was written, what the prophets said, believed about the spirit of the true God. In Genesis 1 verses 1 or 2. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. As I had said in that first session when we unpacked this, here you find God and His Spirit existing together. Ruach Elohim, God and His Spirit existing together when creation came into being. And the Spirit being active, actively involved in <clears throat> producing life on earth. Pay attention to that. The Spirit of God is hovering over the watery deep, the watery surface. Yeah. The reason why the Spirit is hovering is because, as I explained in that first session, God's Spirit is the one that God employs to bring life, to give life, and make life a reality. So here you have God with His Spirit working with His Spirit to make earth a habitable place a place in which life can exist, showing that the spirit with God is creator and the spirit with God existed before creation. So let me ask you guys a question. If the spirit was already existing with God before the creation of the heavens and the earth, doesn't that prove that the spirit is separate from creation? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Of right? Because yeah. he's already existing when creation comes into being. That means he's there before creation, right? Yeah. 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 But hold on, before creation, it's eternity. So here you have proof the spirit is not created. He's eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Keep yeah. that in mind, right? Yeah. yeah. Now let's go to Genesis 126 and see God now speaks to someone and <clears throat> tells that someone, come alongside of me to create man in our image and our likeness. Read Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so god is speaking to someone and he tells that someone you and i together we will create man in our image and our likeness we us all right can we know for certain who this other person happens to be that God was speaking to. And by the way, if he's speaking to someone, that means the one he's speaking to is a person, a person that you can speak with and have communion and fellowship with. Yeah. Can we know for certain who this other person or persons are? Yes, we can. But before I, before I show that, remember, whoever this person is, he will make man, with God. God and this entity or these other persons will come together to make man. Let us make man. Keep that yeah. verb in mind. Make. Now let's go to Genesis 2 verses 4 to 7 to see how God made man a living soul, a living being. How God made man <clears throat> a living creature. Brought him into life. Made him alive. Genesis 2 verses 4 to 7. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. A man became a living being. Now the literal translation is a living soul. So how did Adam mm -hmm. go from being mere dust to a living soul, animate and alive? When God breathed mm -hmm. the breath of life in his nostrils, right? Mm -hmm. You caught it? Yeah. Yes. When God breathed the breath of life in his nostrils. Now let me explain what that doesn't mean. Because if you don't know what it means, you won't see the connection with the Holy Spirit. God is not a physical being that breathes physically. So then why is God inspiring Moses 
to speak of God breathing the breath of life because God will use analogical language. He uses analogies. He will speak in a way that's similar to the way we speak and do things so we can get an idea because God's ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts higher than our thoughts. But God in his humbleness will condescend to speak of himself in ways that we speak of ourselves so we can get an idea. Now, what idea does God want you to get when Moses writes, God breathed the breath of life? See, he's using that as an analogy to when humans breathe or animals breathe in order for you to see a greater spiritual truth because God is not a physical being. He doesn't physically breathe. Yeah. So what does God want us to see when Moses, by inspiration of history, because we believe Moses wrote this, describes God breathing when we know a spiritual being who's not physical doesn't have physical breath. So what does he want us to see? Let's think about it because we're going to go into meat because this will be the last session in the Old Testament the series. So I'm going to take my time and unpack it. Let's think about it. He, God breathes. Well, he doesn't have physical breath because he's not a physical being and he doesn't have lungs. So that's obviously not literal. It's analogical language. So what does God want me to see? Well, when you think breath, the first thing that should come to your mind is life. Because if you can't breathe, you die. Right. Right? That's the first connection. Yeah. So breath is associated with life. life. So right there, it should cue you. God breathe. That means God is sending forth life. Mm. That's why when that breath enters Adam, Adam comes to life. He goes from yeah. dust to being a living soul, right? right. Yeah. But then it says he breathed the breath of life. Now, the breath of life means the spirit of life. Or I'm sorry, the breath of me means the means by which God gives life. Breath of life means that breath that causes life. That gives life, that brings life. You want me there? Yeah. 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 Breath of life means that breath which causes life, gives life, brings life, makes alive. Well, if God doesn't have literal breath, that means the breath of life, the breath of life, their breath must be pointing to something or someone. So the breath of life isn't the physical breath that God breathes to make something alive. The breath must refer to something or someone that God sends out to make things alive. That breath is the spirit. You with me now? Yes. The breath of life is simply another way of referring to the spirit that God sends forth to make things alive. So the breath is the spirit. The spirit is the breath. So if you ask me, who is the breath of life? The Holy Spirit. Why is he called breath? Because when you think breath, you think life. Yeah. 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 And so the spirit gives life. So because he gives life, he's called God's breath. The means by whom God gives life to creation. Yeah. yeah. Everyone got it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Genesis 2-7 is simply a poetic way of saying, the one God created man from dust, he sent forth the Holy Spirit, who then animated Adam by creating a soul in Adam to make Adam come to life, a soul that's sustained by the Spirit, a spirit that's sustained by the Spirit. Yeah. Everyone got it? Because I'm going to prove it to you from Job now. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's tie it in. Genesis 1, verse 2, the Spirit of God is there. And Genesis 1 20 says, God says to someone, let us make man in our image. Yeah. And the man that God made after their image is the man that God sent his breath to make alive. So God and his breath together are making Adam alive. Yeah. And who is the breath? The spirit. Yeah. God is speaking to the spirit and telling the spirit, you and I together will make man come to life. We'll make man a living being. So the spirit is the breath. The breath is the spirit. God is speaking to the spirit and enlisting the spirit to create man. All of what I told you comes in Job 33, verse 4. Everything I just said, you'll find in one verse, Job 33, verse 4. The spirit of God, the breath of the Almighty. The spirit is the breath. The breath is the spirit. God's spirit, who is his breath, 
made man come to life. Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. You got it? Who made yeah. man? The Spirit, the Spirit of, God. of God. Now, this should echo Genesis 126. Let us make man. So here, Job just told you who the us are, God and the Spirit. So according to the Old Testament, who was God speaking to when he said, let us make man in our image? Well, Job 33, 4 told you. The Spirit of God made me. The same verb. Make, made. Same verb. Yeah. And who's speaking? A man. The Spirit of God made me a man. Because that is the Spirit that God said, let us make man in our image. Yeah. So we got that part? Yes. yes. Yeah. But now notice the second line is an allusion to Genesis 2, 7. Because it says, the breath of the Almighty... Gives me light. Gives me light. That Genesis yeah. 2 verse 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you see how Job just combined Genesis 1 verse 2 and 26 and Genesis 2 verse 7 together? Mm. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. I want to take a moment. Yes. You see it, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Now this is what we call in, in Hebrew poetry, this is called the genre of wisdom literature. This is called wisdom literature. Uh, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs are called wisdom literature, where you, you'll find a lot of Hebrew poetry being employed. One of the features of Hebrew poetry is called parallelism. Now, I'm not trying to confuse anyone, but these are things that you need to learn. And any good commentary by any good scholar who studied the structure of Hebrew, how Hebrew is written in the Old Testament and how these books are structured and designed, Scholars have discovered what's known as parallelism. What's yeah. parallelism? Parallel. You'll find a sentence in Psalms or Proverbs or Job, a sentence in which there are two lines, and these two lines are saying the same thing in different ways, where the second line is reiterating, repeating the same point of the first line, but in a different way. Now, what do I mean? When we go back to Job 33, 4, it says the spirit of God has made me. That's line number one. Yeah. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. That's line number two. That means line number two is basically repeating the yeah. same point in line number one, but in a different way. For example, spirit of God. There's the word God. Breath of the Almighty. So notice in the second line, the Almighty is God in the first line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. And then it says, Spirit of God has made me, me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. To make me is to make me alive. So you catch it? Making man is to make him alive. Yes. Okay. But now, if that's the case, if the Almighty of the second line is God in the first line, now follow the train of thought. Spirit yeah. of God, breath of the Almighty. Almighty is God. Breath is who? Spirit. The spirit, yeah. That's Hebrew parallelism. So right yeah. there in those two lines, you are now being shown the spirit is the breath. The breath is the spirit. Just yeah. like God is almighty, almighty is God. God, yes. Yeah. yeah. So now do you see proof that the spirit is God's breath? Yes. God. Yes. Yeah. 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 Clear. Yeah. Beautifully. Yeah. Now, if that's clear, then what it's saying is the spirit is the one who makes everything alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the breath of God that breathes life on all creation, biological life, marine life, plant life, even the life of the stars and constellation are all given life by the spirit. Wow. Yeah, Not yeah. only spiritual life. Yeah. All forms are of life, biological, marine life, plant life, the life of the constellations and the stars and the sun, moon, all that is preserved and made alive by the Father and the Son through the Spirit. Father and Son use the Spirit to give life to all creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now let me prove that to you from Psalm. Go to Psalm 104, 29 to 30. Read Psalm 104, 29. And stop there before you read 30. Okay. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath. They die and return to their dust. 
Now, the Hebrew word for breath is ruach. It's actually spirit. So when God takes the spirit out of man, what happens to man? He dies and returns to dust, right? Yeah. So when you take their spirit, ruach, that's Hebrew. They return to us, they die. So now what if God wants to then recreate them, resurrect them after their spirit is taken away? How does God do it? Now read Psalm 14, 104, 30, the next verse. Psalm 104, verse 30, next verse. Yeah. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Did you catch it? When God wants to recreate the dead and replenish the earth, he sends forth his spirit. So do you see the spirit not only gives life to man, it gives life to the earth. Mm -hmm. Everyone got it, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's go now to Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14. So I'm showing you from the Hebrew Bible, the spirit is creator, maker, sustainer, life giver. Keep that in mind. This is Old Testament. I just proved them in the Old Testament. Spirit of God is the breath of God. That breath that God sends to give life to all creation. So the spirit is creator, maker, sustainer, life giver, according to the Hebrew Bible. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, now, in Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14. 12 to 14. 12 to 14. 14, yeah. Okay. 12 to 14, yeah. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. You make the connection? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, when I put my spirit in you, that's when you live. Yeah. Reread that part again, 14. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So you caught it. When I put my spirit in you, all of you will come to life. So now notice, an entire nation of people who have been spiritually dead, and even the physical, physical dead, when God wants to make them alive, he places his spirit in all of them. The spirit brings all of them back to life, spiritually and physically. This shows the spirit is creator, life giver, preserver of life. And it shows that he has to be omnipotent, all powerful, omnipresent, because he must be able to be with numerous creatures at the same time to preserve them alive at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ripple effect. Please stop barking like a dog. Call me on Skype and I will muzzle you. Because this guy is trying to buy you off so he can blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Let me just, maybe we'll have a live debate like we did last night. Don't be a man in the comment section. Call me and open up your Bible. Yeah. Because I'm going to turn that against you. Please show me where it says God is one person. One person, unipersonal, Unitarian is those exact words. You see how stupid you are? You make Muhammad look intelligent. But anyway, that's what you do with blasphemers. Now, coming back to you. All right. Did you yeah. see the Spirit? Yeah. The Spirit gives life the spirit preserves life yeah. the spirit creates the spirit makes the spirit is able mm -hmm. to take all creatures and preserve them alive for as long as god wants them to live showing that he's almighty and present everywhere mm -hmm. and this is old testament right yes yeah, yeah. i even quote the new testament mm -hmm. i'd even touch the new testament I'd even use the Christian scriptures. I'm using the Hebrew Bible. Amen. So notice the spirit belongs to God. Spirit of God, my spirit, the, the, the spirit speaks to God and God speaks to the spirit because God said, let us make man in our image. So God and the spirit are distinct. And the spirit was there with God, was already existing with God when creation came into being, showing that he was there before creation and therefore eternal. And all of this from the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. yeah. All of this from the Hebrew Bible, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but now let's go to Genesis 6, verse 3. Genesis 6, verse 3. Now we're going to go into a little deeper meat. Yes. Okay. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now this is in the context of 
Do you guys want to block this demonic troll, this swine pig who's not going to call and debate because he just wants to blast yeah, me? Yeah, Ripple, yeah. listen, stop barking like a dog. Call me on Skype so we can destroy your satanic God by the true word of God because you worship Satan and your father's the devil. You don't know the true God. So be a man and call me. Let's see if you can defend your distortion of Isaiah 45 because I'll use Isaiah to bury your fake God in you. But you're not brave. You just bark like a rabid satanic dog in the comment section. Yeah. So yeah. there you go, coward. Let's see if you really have faith in your God. If your God is real, call me. Defend him. Yeah. But you know your God is fake, which is why you bark against the true God, which is why we muzzle you in Jesus' name. Come on, get up, get an amen. Woo! Amen. Yeah, amen, 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 amen. <laughs> and I don't understand no. even why he have to give uh, something. No, because uh, he's trying to get your so attention. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, we, we, that's you're the not deal. welcome. If you don't like some, and uh, you're against you. No, he doesn't all like our God. He yeah, doesn't yeah, like yeah. So you are against all of us, please leave. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. mother. No, he let him call. I want him to call. Remember last night yeah. call, on Al call some. For yes. those of you who don't know, last night we had an excellent discussion over two hours mm -hmm. with a Sunni Muslim who's going to call me again on Al Fadi station. He was respectful. I was respectful to him. He didn't mock, mm -hmm. so I didn't mock yeah. him. Yeah. Call because we want you yes. to see the truth because you worship Satan. You don't worship yeah. the God of Bible. And you yeah, are right. you're a barking spiritual dog who's barking at the true God. That's why we'll muzzle you. But we want you to repent and be saved so you can know Please the call. true God and be our brother in Jesus' name. Yeah, can you right, call you now? He, he has he has your number. Yeah, he's, he's, got he's got Skype. my He's got my Yeah, he can call anytime. Yeah. Why not? We we show this in action, but you know he wants to bark blasphemies because that's all he can do. Yeah. He cannot do they it don't here. have faith in their God to give them wisdom because we have faith in the Lord Jesus. He says, right. "I'll give you a wisdom and tongue, yeah. by which your opponents cannot handle." Yeah. He says. That. So I know my Lord is real and he'll give me the power Amen. to glorify him. Amen. But they really think their God is real. Why are you such cowards? Come and call and defend your God because you know your God is true. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. But anyway, Amen. I'm getting excited. I want to lay hands on people. Hey, you're here. By the way, <laughs> next time when David Wood is on, make sure I'm on so that I can send them some blessings live, right? Yes. <laughs> Both of you. Yeah. I still can't that. understand how yeah. someone so ugly <laughs> get over 400 people to watch him on your channel and your video is now what over 60,000 why do you yeah. guys support such ugly human beings <laughs> do you see his nostrils his nostrils is bigger than my head have you seen it uh, <laughs> it looks like the orc from the lord of the Rings. but anyway let's see oh, okay, Genesis next time you invited both of you yeah, come together yeah. please yeah but the only thing with David he only allows the other person to speak like like 10% of the time. So what I want you to do, <laughs> you then mute him and let him think he's talking. Let him think he's talking. We'll have an actual conversation. And every 10 minutes, we'll mute him. Oh, good point, David. Excellent. Keep going. Mute. But Genesis 6, verse 3. Let's go back to Genesis 6, verse 3. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me read it again. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, this is the context of the flood. This is why people need to read contextually. Yeah. This is the story of God being so grieved with the wickedness and evil of mankind. He's about to destroy the world with a flood. So now in that context, notice what God says. Yeah. What does he say? My spirit, notice God in his spirit. My spirit will not contend with man forever for he is mortal, meaning he's destined to die. Now, I want you to guys pay attention to the connection. My spirit won't contend with man forever because man is mortal, meaning man is destined to die because God is about to destroy mankind in the flood. Yeah. He is flesh. By flesh meaning that he is of the dust and dust till return because man is about to die for their wickedness. Yeah. But now notice there's a connection between God's spirit, man dying, and man's days being only 120. What does he mean 120? If you do the math and you calculate from the time Noah built the ark, he was 500 years old when he started building the ark. And he finished building the ark, finished building the ark when he was 600 years old. Okay? Oh 600 years old. Here's my Skype, you rabid dog. Call me. We're still waiting. That means when God says 
the days of man are 120. He's not talking about the lifespan of human beings. Because even afterwards, you have pro prophets and patriarchs that live way past 120 years old. Yeah. What he means is man's life on earth will only continue for 120 more years, and then the flood will come. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. Now, doesn't understand what God is saying there. Yeah. I'm only going to put up with mankind for 120 more years. Day here means years. Yeah. And then after 120 years, I will wipe out mankind because mankind is mortal, destined to die because of their sin, and my spirit won't strive with them. Yeah. Right. Has everyone got that? what that means now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you understand what that means, that means man will die because God's spirit will be taken away from man. Pay attention to the verse again. My spirit will not contend with man, meaning my spirit will not remain with man and give life to man because I've determined to wipe out man, which means my spirit will be taken away. Right. Yeah. So the connection is when God's spirit is taken away, life no longer exists. Yes. Yeah. Without the spirit, there is no life. Yeah. So you yeah. see the connection here. Yes. My yeah. spirit is what's giving mankind life, but I'm so sick of their evil. My spirit won't contend with man, convict man, sustain man, because I'm going to remove my spirit so that man can die. Because when the spirit is taken, man dies. Yeah. 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 So how many more years does mankind have before God brings the flood and takes away the Holy Spirit from them so they die in the flood? 120. 120. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's what people ask to yeah. repeat. So you get, you get the yeah. Because if you do the chronology from God's utterance, from the utterance of God, 120 years, and from the time Noah builds the ark and finishes it, it takes about 120 years. Because yeah. Noah was 500 when he started building the ark, and he was 600 when he finished building it. Yeah. So then you have another 20 years. So the 120 years refers to the time in which God says he'll destroy mankind to the time of the flood. It took about 120 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We got that, right? Because I want you to yes. see again yes. how the Holy yes. Spirit is the one who's giving life. And here yeah. you're going to see that the Holy Spirit doesn't just give life to humans. He gives life to animals yeah. and plants. Watch here. Now watch Genesis 6, 17. 6, 17. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Now, you remember that language, breath of life? That was used of Adam, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. In Genesis 2.19, I'm sorry, Genesis 2.7, we were told that when God breathed into the nostrils of man, the breath of life, man became a living soul, right? Yes. Mm. But now notice it says, every creature that is alive, that breathes, has that breath of life in them. Not just humans, because when God destroys the world, is he just destroying humans or animals as well? Everything, animals as well. Yeah. yeah. So here you're told from God's own holy mouth, all flesh, whether animals or humans, have the breath of life. Because all flesh are living souls sustained by the spirit. Yeah. You catching it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. In fact, are you aware that the very word used of Adam in Genesis 2, 7, where it says Adam is a living being, literally living soul. That same phrase is used of the animals and the birds. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Go to Genesis 2, 7, Genesis 2, 7 and read that for me. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Now, your translation says living being. You can also say living soul. Now, remember those words, living, living being. Now, I'm going to give you a link. You can post it okay. on the screen so people can see it. Here it is. You'll see, you don't need to read Hebrew because it transliterates it. This is Bible Hub. You'll see that the words living being is lenefesh chaya. Lenefesh chaya. Nefesh. In Arabic, nefs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Yeah. Arabic, you say nafs. Hebrew, it's nafesh here, right? Nafesh chaya. You caught it? Yeah. Okay. So man became nafesh chaya, right? Mm -hmm. Soul that lives. Okay, now watch what God says about the animals and the birds that he brings to Adam to name. Read Genesis 2.19 for me. Two. 
Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature was... Guess what the word living thing. creature is? The word living creature for the animals and the birds? Nefesh chaya, the same words. So, but did you catch what God just called the animals and the birds? He called them living souls. Living souls. Yeah, yeah. living souls. Same word, nefesh chaya. Same thing said of Adam. Like Adam yeah. is a nefesh chaya, a soul that's alive. The animals and the birds are nefesh chaya. They too are souls that are alive, living souls. Wow. 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 Are you going to make us vegan tonight, Sam? Well, <laughs> But why do you think now you just made a good point? So, guys, I want you to see what she says because, see, no, no, the spiritual Thor just said making a case for veganism. She, man, you, both of you said the same thing. Okay, yeah. let me, let me, let me now show you the logic of why God says you can't eat animals with blood in it. Let me show, explain because what you said, Naomi and spiritual Thor said, beautiful connection you made that shows that you're meditating because yeah. Yeah. if they're living souls, then how dare we eat a living soul? It yeah, almost yeah. sounds repulsive, right? Yeah, yeah, no question, yeah. That's why God says you must drain the blood out of an animal because their soul is in the blood. So if you eat yeah. their blood, you're eating their soul. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Did you catch it? Yeah. Leviticus 17, 11 says the soul, the word life is the word soul, is in the blood. In the blood. And he says yeah. don't eat the blood. Drain the animal of the blood. And when it comes to the atonement, present that blood to me because when I see the blood, I'm seeing the soul, the life of the animal. That's why you don't eat an animal with blood because by eating the blood, you're eating its soul. Wow, okay. Well, what about like things like steak then? <laughs> Do they not have blood in them? No, that, that doesn't that? have blood in it. We're not talking about when, okay, an animal's killed yeah. and then somehow, you know, there's some, some traces of its blood because you're not going to completely drain it of all its blood. That's mm -hmm. right. Right? Yeah. But the whole point, what God is saying is, Drinking that the blood. When you slaughter an animal, this is in ancient times, you don't just cook it. Slit the throat, drain out its blood, because I don't want you to eat its soul, its life. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. precisely why God said drain the blood, because you're not going to eat a living soul. Yeah. You know the Somalis, they used to do when they slaughter the animal, they took the blood and they will make a, like a shower. With some, like if you are yeah. if you are not feeling well or sick, they do like a, oh, wow. instead of water, yeah, will be like a blood all over yourself. I think it's uh, satanic. Yeah, it's not, it's not satanic. it is satanic. Yeah. yeah. But you, so you got the connection with all animals and birds, like humans, are living souls because the Holy Spirit gives them life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So notice that in the nostrils of all animals and birds and humans is the breath of life, meaning. The breath of the Holy Spirit is the one who gives all of them life. Yeah. 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 Who gives all of them souls. Yeah. Who sustains their souls. Who does it? The spirit who's the breath that gives life. Yeah. Now go to Genesis 7, 15. Genesis. Get some. Give me your Skype name so I can know. So you're going to get some. What's your Skype name? That means I blocked you. Well, guys, if you block him without him giving me my Skype name, then I won't know. Yeah, is that he's his, someone that I blocked? Yeah, he said so he's sure. blocked. I think because he may be changing his. No, that means maybe. he's a troll. He's a demonic, filthy troll that yeah. stalks me, and I've already blocked him on Skype. So he's one because yeah. there's this young kid. This is a true story. There's a young kid who starts fifty thousand accounts because I think he's demonically possessed, and yeah. he's been psychologically damaged because he's a stalker. Oh. Yeah, I'm telling you, he starts like fifty thousand accounts. He's he's a yeah. sick human being, and I suspect something's been done to him. And he's now taking out on the world. But may God save him or give him what he deserves. But anyway, go to Genesis 7, 15. 15. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. Now, who went into the ark two by two? All the flesh. Ark. Yeah, all flesh. all flesh. But is that referring to Noah's family? Was there only eight of them? No. Who went animals. 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 Yeah, animals. 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 Animals and birds. But wait, it yeah. says animals and birds have what? Read it again. Genesis 7, 15. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all okay. flesh in which is the breath of life. They so all you just breath of life. read yeah. from the Bible. Yeah. Yes. You just read from the Bible. All animals, fowls of the air, humans, have the breath of life. They're all living souls that have life and soul from the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's sunken. I don't know if you understand that. That means humans are not the only ones with souls that animate their bodies. Animals and birds have souls that animate their bodies. Those souls that they have and we have were created, produced by the spirit. Because it's the spirit who makes you alive, a living soul, and sustains your soul and preserves you. And he does that for humans and animals and birds and for everything. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Is it sinking in who the spirit is? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So if it's sinking in, you just learn the Holy Spirit, who is the breath of God. Why is he called breath? Not because he's physical breath, because breath means life. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives life to everything that breathes. He gives life to the entire creation. He gives life to the plants, to the animals, to the birds, to the insects, to the marine life, to, <clears throat> to the stars, to humans. He's the one giving life, sustaining life, preserving life. And he's made animals and birds and humans, living souls, giving them souls by which they live, souls that he sustains. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly, Kyle. We are image bearers of God, which means that being in, in the image of God means more than that we have a soul and a spirit. Because even angels are spirits and animals are souls that have spirits by which they live. Souls and spirits given to them by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm. Okay, so everyone got it? Yes. yes. Okay, now before I move on. What translation are you reading? Um, New King James. Now, do me a favor. For this one, I want you to look at New American Standard Bible, the 1995 edition, if you can get it. New American Standard Bible, Genesis 7, 22. What version did you say? Sorry, which, which year? New American Standard Bible, 1995, I believe. 1995, yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. And then what would you like me to read? The same verse? Seven, no, I'm about to make me hang myself my shoestrings. Genesis 722. Yeah, 722. You're going to make me hang myself now. That's why you're doing all these ugly pictures of me to get back at me. <laughs> okay. Um, of all that was on the dry land, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirits of life. Done. What a beautiful phrase. Yeah. Did you guys read the phrase? The Hebrew says, all that was on dry land, not only humans, because even animals and birds perished, right? No. Yeah. It says everything on dry land that had breath of the spirit of life. You know what that means? Now, let me show you. That's what the Hebrew says. You don't need to read Hebrew. Here's the link. All the animals, the birds, and humans received their breath from the spirit who gives life. That's what you just read. Did you read it? Read it one more time, you know, Naomi. Okay. Of all that was on the dry land... All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life died. Okay, so every animal on land, all the birds, humans, had breath that made them alive. And that breath was given to them by the spirit who gives breath, who gives life. Yeah. Okay, here's the link so you can see what the Hebrew is. And you can post it for them, guys. Here it is. Yeah. Here's the link. So you guys don't need to read Hebrew. Thank the Lord for modern technology. Go on Bible Hub. Watch here. It says, here it is, the nostrils again. Notice in their nostrils, that's Genesis 2, 7, right? Yeah. Yeah. Notice the word chayim, that's plural, lives. Ruach, nishmat. Chayim, lives, ruach, of the spirit, nishmat. Breath in their nostrils, right? The yeah. breath that made them alive, life from the spirit. So here you find in Genesis 7, 22, mm -hmm. where Moses, by inspiration, says, it's the spirit who gave them their breath, that breath, that soul that makes them alive. So the spirit gives life by giving you souls to animate your bodies, and he's the one who sustains your souls, or he can take them out of your bodies, and you die. Yeah. Who does that? The spirit. The spirit. Yes. The spirit. The spirit. So yeah. do you see conclusive proof from the old testament spirit is creator maker life giver preserver he's the one who gives life not just to humans but to animals to birds to insects to all creation so the spirit gives biological life plant life marine life life in the sea <clears throat> it all forms of life even spiritual life 
is given to us by the Father and the Son through the Spirit. Yeah. 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 And the Spirit was already existing with God before creation, so he's eternal. And the yeah. Spirit and God spoke with each other. God told the Spirit, let us make man. So here I just established the Spirit is God Almighty, creator, Amen. maker, sustainer, life giver, preserver of all life, whom God speaks with and consults because he's a person like God. Yeah. 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 It's clear? Yeah, yes. very, very. Now, before very. I move on to the other points, because I got a lot more points. Yeah. Any questions on the topic? Not on some other topics. See if they have, because I want to. I want to make sure people are not confused and I didn't overwhelm them. Yeah, let's see. I like Any what questions? Kyle just said. Look yeah. what he just said, brother. God is illuminating your mind, Kyle. May illuminate all our minds. Lord Jesus, bless you for your wisdom from the Spirit. This makes the concept of murder so much worse. Lord, have mercy on us for destroying what you create. Wow, you're right. And it also should move you with compassion for the unnecessary killing and torturing of animals exactly. that cannot protect themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is why if you love God and you believe the Bible is God's word, then you must fight not just for humans who are being tortured or unborn children who are being murdered, you must fight for the protection of animals like cats and dogs who are being tortured and murdered by sick, demonized psychos. Yeah. 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 Because they all have breath from the spirit. They all have souls from the spirit, souls that the spirit gives them to make them alive and preserves their souls in them so they can continue living for as long as the spirit wants them to live. Yeah. Yes, Jared, the spirit sustains everyone, even in hell. Good question. Jared just asked me, is the spirit sustaining folks in hell? Of course, because Jared, hell could not continue and <clears throat> Satan and demons could not continue and humans could not continue in hell if the Holy Spirit is not preserving them there as well. Wow. I never, never thought that. Or Can hell exist apart from God? No, no, no. Who fuels the fires of hell, whether metaphorical or literal? God's wrath. Yeah, yeah. Who's preserving Satan and demons, immune beings, from being consumed by the flames? Because if I throw you in a fire, it's going to burn you to a crisp, you die. But this fire it doesn't consume your flesh. You continue experiencing torment in your bodies after judgment in hell, right? Yeah, yeah. So who do you think is sustaining your bodies not to be consumed in the flames? If the flames are literal or metaphorical, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. 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 Wow. In fact, let me show you that the Bible says Jesus' presence is there in hell, in the lake of fire, as people are being tormented. It's in the Bible. Go to Revelation 14, verses 9 to 11. Revelation 14, verses 9 to 11. Like you guys are like silent, almost like you're shocked. Are you shocked? Oh, no, I, I just didn't think of it that way, to be honest. It, it's kind of like it's clicking for me yeah. personally. Okay, it was 19. What was the verse? Sorry. Uh, 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Revelation 14, 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Okay. Then he said to me, Write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. Revelation 14, 9 to 11. It's stuck oh, for Allah. It's stuck for Allah. Oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. 14. Sorry. 14. I was reading 19. I don't know why I was reading 19. You got nervous now. Next week's going to be an uglier picture. <laughs> Better picture. 14, 9 to 11. 9 to 11, got it. Okay. Revelation 14, verse 9 to 11. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. So who's there overseeing the torment of unbelievers in the lake of fire? The presence of the lamb. Yeah. The Jesus, lamb. huh? Yeah, yeah. The lamb. So read Revelation 14 10 again. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. 
he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right? So there you go. And he'll be tormented in the presence of the angels and the presence of the Lamb. And then finish verse 11. Yeah. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. So there you go. The Bible says the triune God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three persons of the Godhead, they sustain every part of creation, even the lake of fire, because the lake of fire is created. Yeah. yeah. And the lake of fire could not exist if God doesn't sustain it, because the lake of fire is not eternal. Yes. The lake of fire is a place God created to torment the devil and his angels. Well, the lake of fire would not exist if God doesn't sustain it. And mm -hmm. Satan and the angels would not be preserved alive in the flames of fire to be tormented if God is not preserving them alive and not allowing the fire to consume them. Right. It's yeah. like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, when they were thrown in the fire in Daniel 3. The Son of God appeared as a fourth man, appearing visibly. And in the fire, they were walking like they're walking in a pool. The fire did not harm them. The fire did not consume them because God Almighty controls fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he can make the fire consume you or he can make the fire feel like a pool of water and be cool on you. Or he can sustain your body that as you experience the agony of the flames, your body's not consumed. Yeah. Right. That's right. Amen. Is that making sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the triune God sustains creation. And again, to show that hell is not eternal, it was created. Only God is eternal. Everything else is part of creation. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew. Exactly, Jared. He sustains it all. Jared, don't need to ask me. Nothing could live apart Matthew. from the spirit sustaining it. Not even maggots. Not even a maggot. Like David Wood would live if the spirit did. Matthew 25, 41. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared. Prepared. So that means the lake of fire, the everlasting fire is not eternal and created. It was prepared. It was created. It was made. Made for who? Matthew 25, 41. Read it again. Sorry. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So God did not create hell for human beings, but for the devil and the angels. But when you follow the devil, either knowingly or unknowingly, you leave God no choice but to then hand you over to your desires and to your master and whoever your master is there you shall be with him yeah yeah okay so we got that now holy spirit now let's go back other passages in the hebrew bible showing the holy spirit is god he yeah. possesses the attributes of god and the holy spirit <clears throat> is a person not an active force yeah. Yeah. no just me mikey you're talking about a fallen world in a fallen world, now things are not the way they were before the fall. Because of that, even the animal kingdom, plant life, insects have been tainted. So if you have bugs or insects that are harmful, you must then kill them because they can transmit diseases and viruses. In fact, one of our, many of our viruses are the result of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. It's like saying I shouldn't kill a cobra. Yes, you should. Because now, due to the fall, due to evil affecting, corrupting the entire world, things are not what they are. So insects are not functioning the way they were meant to function. Plants are not functioning the way they were meant to function because sin has contaminated the world and corrupted their pure, <clears throat> pure nature. Right. And so when Jesus comes, he's going to restore the entire world. And he's going to restore the animal kingdom and insects and plants to be how God intended them to be before the fall, where no one will harm one another ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, okay. Now, mm -hmm. let's go to let's go to Second Samuel twenty-three one to three. 
Second Samuel. 23, 1 or 3. 23. 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now these are the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Jesse. Thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel. Now, sister, pay attention. These are David's last words. Mm. I'm calling heaven for you, Naomi, so I can get you some breaks. But anyway, <laughs> these are David's last words? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now notice what David writes by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Pay attention. This is a thousand years before Jesus. Second Samuel 23, verses 2 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. Pause it right there. Who spoke by David? The Spirit, the Spirit of, the of, the Lord. Lord. of the Lord. So you're telling me a thousand years before Jesus was born, David knew... The Holy Spirit was inspiring him. David knew, David knew the Holy Spirit speaks and teaches and instructs. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me. So God's Spirit speaks, which means he's a person. Yeah. God's Spirit teaches me what to say, instructs me what to say. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me. He used my mouth to speak his words. His word is on my tongue. So David knew he spoke the words of the spirit and wrote down the words of the spirit and he knew that the spirit speaks because the spirit is a person yeah yeah you got it yes okay now read again second Samuel 23 2 and 3 the spirit of the lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue the god of israel said the rock of israel spoke to me he who rules over men must be just now let me ask you a question naomi and verse 3, who spoke to David and through David? In verse 3? Because the God of Israel. But in verse 2, it says the Spirit of the Lord was speaking. Yeah. yeah. So who actually spoke to David, inspired David, instructed David, and gave David his words for David to write and communicate? That's God Ooh. Almighty. Yeah. yeah. But wait, it says the Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Who is it? You're confusing me. Is it God Almighty or the Spirit of the Lord? The same. The Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. God. Uh, yeah. See, yeah. Shino is genius. Why can't you ladies be like him? See, there's two of you there. According to Islam, two of you equal one of him. Come on. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord is the God of Israel who speaks. Yeah. yeah. You caught it? Yeah. The Spirit yeah. of the Lord is the God of Israel who speaks. So the Holy Spirit is a person who is God. Mm -hmm. That's what you just said. And who said it? David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me a thousand years before the birth of Jesus, David knew God's Spirit is a person who is God, who speaks and instructs and inspires us to say the words he wants us to say and record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And this is Old Testament, guys. Yeah, it is. Old yeah. Testament. How is it? The Old Testament has so much to say about the Holy Spirit that the Spirit is distinct from God. He's a person who is God, does things only God can do, eternal. And yet you have Christians and you have Jews and Muslims who do not think the Old Testament teaches that the Holy Spirit is God, even Christians, because they're not very, very literate in the Old Testament. So that's, that's one. So the Spirit speaks. Yes. The Spirit inspires prophets. The Spirit is God who speaks. That's what you got from there. Now go yes. to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 9. So there's some people who are writing some questions. I think maybe yeah, you I can't answer wait. that question. You yeah. need to wait, guys, and, yes. and give the questions later. Because yes. that's Sam's not ready, ready for the topic right now. Yeah. Yeah, yes. when yeah. Sam is ready. Thank you. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse yeah. 20. Read that for me, sister. Verse 20. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave Hold them on. water. Yeah. Read that again. Start again at the beginning. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth. Manna. And gave them water for their thirst. Okay. So who instructed Israel? The Lord's spirit. Spirit. Not only the Spirit, the good Spirit. The good yeah. spirit. Your good Spirit. So God 
and his spirit, and the spirit is good. And yet Jesus says, there's none good but God. Mm. Yeah. So the spirit is good. The spirit yeah. belongs to God, and the spirit instructs. Now, if the spirit is not a person, how can the spirit instruct anyone? Yeah, true. That's exactly if the spirit true. doesn't have awareness, if the yeah. spirit doesn't have consciousness, if the spirit yeah. doesn't have intellect, how can the spirit instruct and teach? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That shows you that the Joe's witnesses are wrong. Yeah. They are wrong. Are wrong. Mm -hmm. They are. Because the spirit is a person. Yes. And he is God. Nehemiah 9 20. Now, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Same chapter, verse 30. Okay. Yet for many years you had patience with them and testified against them by your spirits in your prophets. Yet they would not oh, listen. Oh, wow, Naomi. And by the way, these pauses you take between sentences, you kill me because I think you're done. <laughs> to read not only are you killing people with the sound of your voice, a lot of people are in coma, now comatose state. But you're, <laughs> you're like you're a professional reader. You gave them your good spirit. Pause. Okay. And then the, it's okay, read fast. Sorry. No, but, say what do you want? Do you want me to read fast? Do you want me to read slow? No, sometimes <laughs> fast, sometimes slow because I'm double minded. <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, One more time. Go ahead. Yeah. Yet for many years you had patience with them and testified against them by your spirit in your prophets. How can they, how can the spirit testify against anyone if the spirit is not a person? But now notice three things. God testified against them by sending his spirit to testify against them. And the spirit used the prophets to testify against them. Three groups, yeah. God, the spirit, and the prophets. Notice here that the Old Testament saints are aware the spirit inspires prophets. The yeah. spirit speaks through prophets. The spirit enables prophets to speak God's words. And this is in the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 13 and 14. We're almost done with this session, but just yes, yes. know that the Spirit is a person who is God and does things that only God can do. Isaiah 40, verses 13 to 14. Okay. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him? With whom did he take counsel, and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? What's the answer? Naomi, to those questions. Reread it again. Okay. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him? What's the answer? Um, I don't know. Read this yeah. <laughs> Read your body. You, yeah. These are serious and rhetorical questions. Has anyone directed the spirit of the Lord where he should go? No. Has anyone taught the spirit what to say? No, no, no one. Has the, has the spirit consulted with anyone? To give the spirit understanding on things he doesn't know? No. So read 14, finish it. Read 14 and finish it. With whom did he take counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? These are a series of rhetorical questions saying, no one. How do you teach the spirit? How do you guide the spirit? How do you instruct the spirit? How do you teach him understanding wisdom when the spirit is omniscient? In other words, what you just read, Naomi, yeah. Isaiah affirmed the spirit of the Lord is all knowing. And how do yes. you teach someone who's all knowing? Yeah. 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 He does, yeah. So this is Old Testament? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And the Old Testament, there it is all that God's spirit is omniscient, all knowing, and no one can teach someone who knows everything already? Yeah. It's all here. Yeah. Old Testament, huh? Yes. yes. Wow, what do you make? Now go to Isaiah 63, verse 10. Isaiah 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit, so he turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. Who do they grieve? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. How do you grieve? How do you hurt the Holy Spirit if he doesn't have emotions? Yeah. It's a person. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a person. So the Holy Spirit was grieved. He was hurt. Means he has emotions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. He's all-knowing, omniscient, and he has emotions. Isaiah 6, yeah. 3, 10. Now read verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? 
Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them? And that's how it finishes. Now, notice, did you notice? Isaiah is saying, at the time of Moses, God placed his Holy Spirit in their midst. The Holy Spirit was in the midst of the people of God at the time of Moses, the very people that Moses brought out of Egypt and entered the wilderness. Let me ask everyone a question. Why was the Holy Spirit placed in their midst? For what reason? This is referring to the nation of Israel being brought out of Egypt, preserved in the wilderness before they entered the land of Canaan. And it says during that time, the Holy Spirit was in their midst. Why? Yeah. To preserve their life. Yeah, to guide them, to preserve them, and uh, to give them life. Yeah. You know, I want to yeah. kiss your head. <laughs> Here you're being told that in the Exodus, God used his Holy Spirit to preserve his people in the wilderness, to sustain them, to guide them, to teach them, to instruct them. Yeah. Wow. Now, what power must the Holy Spirit have to be able to sustain alive an entire nation of people and all their cattle and animals in the wilderness? The power of yes. God, right? Yeah, omnipotent. Yep. Now, read verse 14 of the same chapter, Isaiah 63, 14. As a beast goes down into the valley, and the Spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. Who so caused him to rest? The Spirit of the, the, Spirit Lord. Of the Lord. Read it again. As a beast goes down into the valley, and the Spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. Mm -hmm. So you lead your people to make yourself a glorious name. Yeah. So it is the Spirit of God that gave his people rest. It's the Spirit yeah. of God that preserved his people. It's the Spirit of God that sustained them and kept them alive. Yeah. But for the Spirit to do that for an entire nation and their animals, he must be the creator and life giver. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. You saw it? The yeah. Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. Now notice it says, as the beast goes down into the valley, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now let me let me capture the meaning. As David Wood goes down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused them rest. <laughs> yeah, the beast. Isn't David Wood a beast? But anyway, the Spirit of the Lord <laughs> gave them rest. Okay, here it says, the Spirit of the Lord, His Holy yeah. Spirit, was in their midst, gave them rest, and they hurt His Holy Spirit, showing He has, yeah. he has emotions. But now let's go to Exodus 33, 14. Notice who gives Israel rest. Exodus 33, 14. Mm. Okay. Wow. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Okay, now, Naomi, you're confusing me. Here, it's Jehovah. And he says, I will give you rest. But in Isaiah 63, verse 14, it says, it was the spirit of Jehovah that gave them rest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, praise God. So who gave them rest? God. Is God cool. Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. But it says the yeah. Spirit did. Spirit. Isaiah 64. Yeah. The Spirit yeah. is God. Yeah. yeah spirit so is Jehovah God. gave them rest. The Spirit of Jehovah gave them rest because he's one with Jehovah and God. But yeah. then we go to New Testament, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. 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 Amen. Wow. The word of God. What connection? Amen. Yeah. That is yes, the connection. Yeah. So in Matthew 11:28, 28, Jesus okay. says, I will give everyone rest. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 63, 14 says, the spirit of Jehovah spirit gives God's Jehovah. people rest. Isaiah, wow. Exodus 33, 14 says, Jehovah gives rest. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. And I don't know. Oh, you guys are confused me. Who, who gave what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Now I'm going to show you the Holy Spirit is God who's a person in Ezekiel. Oh, we got a few more references. We'll wrap it up. We'll be done with the series now for now. Okay. Go to Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And read verse 2. Verse 2. Only verse 2, yeah? Not one. Verses 1 and 2. Ezekiel 2, verse 1 and 2, but the key verse is 2. Pay attention. Okay. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I'll speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. Did you catch what the Old Testament prophets knew? Now let me explain what this means. The Old Testament prophets knew that it's only by the Holy Spirit's power, the Holy Spirit indwelling them, empowering them, that they can see God and hear from God and speak yeah. to God and communicate God's word. Oh, yeah. You're seeing it because in verse 1, God is appearing to Ezekiel. And he says, yeah. son of man, stand before me. Because Ezekiel, when he saw God, fell in prostration. He swooned out of the glorious appearance. 
So what did God do? He sent the Holy Spirit to then empower Ezekiel, stand him upright, strengthen him so he can stand before the Lord, see the Lord, hear the Lord, and then communicate God's words. Yeah. Mm. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now, here's what's even more mind-blowing about this chapter. There are no chapter divisions in the Hebrew manuscripts. That was added later. But notice verse 1, the one speaking to him, what does he say in verse 1? Ezekiel 2, 1. Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Okay, so God is speaking to him saying, stand on your feet because you're going to see why. Because he fell prostrate, he swooned from the glorious majestic appearance of God. Stand up, I'll speak to you. And then in 2, who comes in him to empower him to stand before the Lord? Read verse 2. Then the Spirit entered yeah. me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. You see how important the Holy Spirit is for the life of everyone, especially the believer. Without yeah. the Holy Spirit, you cannot live. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot breathe. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot know God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot see God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot hear God. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't speak to God. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't live for God. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot die for God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, That's why Jesus God. says you must be born of water and spirit. Yes. Yeah. Spirit. yeah. Wow. You caught it? Mm, yes. yes. But if you really want to get blown away, who is the God that said to Ezekiel, son of man, stand up before me. Go now, Ezekiel 1. Get ready to be blown away. Ezekiel 1, 26 to 28. 26 to 28. And before the firmament over their heads was a likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Ezekiel had a vision. He sees what looks like a throne. And then he sees sitting on a throne the shape of a man. Of a man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Reread it again. Yeah. Okay. And above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of, of the Lord. The Lord. Yeah. Amen. So he Amen. saw the glory of the Lord appearing as a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A glorious, luminescent man, man on a throne. And this was the glory of the Lord. Wow. wow. Hallelujah. And then what did he do when he saw it? So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. Now, not just to show you the connection with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Connection with Jesus, this glorious, majestic, luminescent figure who's appearing in human shape on a throne. When he saw, he fell, right, on my yeah. face, and I heard a voice of one speaking. And that's the one who said to him, Son of man, stand before me. Yeah. Let me prove to you this is Jesus. Go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1. I want you to read 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Okay. I, John, both, uh, sorry, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard... Do you know the connection with Ezekiel? Yeah. Just like Ezekiel had to be in the spirit, the spirit in him, to see yeah. God and hear God, John too had to be in the spirit, the spirit, the spirit in him to see God and hear God. Wow. wow. Making the connection? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Read verse 10 again. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Theatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. 
and having turned, I saw seven golden lump stones. So now he's going to tell you who the voice was. So when I heard the voice, by the Holy Spirit, give me the power to see and hear the voice. I now turned to see who this person was that was speaking to me. So when I turned, I saw seven golden lamb stands. Now let's pick it up from there all the way to 18. You were at 12. Now continue all the way to 18. And in the midst of the seven lamp stands, one, like the Son of Man, clothed with garments down to the feet and girded about the way, the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were like white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if re refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. It sounds had, like what, he, what Ezekiel saw, right? Yeah. yeah. Keep reading. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and, in his, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Just like they, Ezekiel they, did, right? Yeah, 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 exactly the same. John, yeah. like Ezekiel, needed the Holy Spirit to empower them to see God and hear from God. Yeah. And John, like Ezekiel, when he saw the glorious appearance of God, swooned oh. before his feet. And now notice what happens. Yeah. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Hmm. I am he who lives and was dead. And I was old. dead. Yeah, I was dead. I was yeah. dead. So who's speaking yeah. to him? Jesus. 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 Yeah. And behold, what is it then? I was then. What does he say? And behold, I am alive forevermore. Forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Mm -hmm. So this is Jesus that appeared to John in the glorious, luminescent <clears throat> manifestation that caused John to swoon. Yeah. Just yeah. like when Ezekiel saw that visible shape of a man on a visible throne that was glorious, luminescent. He swooned too because what John saw is what Ezekiel saw. Ezekiel saw what John saw. Ezekiel saw Jesus before he became flesh. John is seeing wow. Jesus after his flesh and resurrection. Yeah. Wow. wow. And to further prove that what Ezekiel saw, he was seeing Jesus. It says this man, that was the appearance of the glory of the Lord. In John 1.14, we are told, John 1.14, and the word became flesh, was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we yeah. beheld his glory. Yeah. This was the glory of the Lord I saw. We beheld his glory. Little the Lord. glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then John 1.18 says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father has revealed him. Meaning, you cannot see God, you cannot understand God without Jesus revealing God to you. That means if John is right, that man that appeared in this glorious, luminescent manner on a visible throne, whom Ezekiel said was the glory of the Lord, that has to be Jesus appearing to Ezekiel, allowing him by the Spirit to see God in visible form. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Wow. So the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament. Yes. Our God can and does appear as a man and actually then became a man in Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, wow. amazing. Yes. Okay, now let's go to Ezekiel 324. 324. Okay. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. Okay, wait. Who entered him? The Spirit. The Spirit. Who empowered him? The Spirit. Spirit. And who's telling him what to say and do? The Spirit. The Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So you're telling me the Old Testament prophets already knew the Spirit is a person who mm -hmm. comes upon them and empowers them and teaches yeah. them and speaks to them and tells them what to do and how to do it? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's Old Testament? Yes. yes. Yeah, Old Testament. Yeah. Old Testament. What a man. Go to Ezekiel yes. 11, verse 5. Verse 5. 11 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak, thus says the Lord. Who thus told him to speak? The Spirit, the Spirit of the, of the Lord. Lord, the Lord. Yes. So again, the Holy Spirit is coming upon Ezekiel. Ezekiel, speak. speak. And here's what the Lord says. So now the Spirit tells him what the Lord wants him to say. Finish it. Thus you have said, O house of Israel, 
for I know the things that come into your mind. Wow! <laughs> the Spirit is a person who instructs, yes. teaches, guides the prophets and tells them what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But he is the Spirit of the Lord, so they're distinct. Yeah. Now let's go to Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. 25. Okay. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. The new water. creation, huh? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Already in the Old Testament, God speaks about being a new creation, new creation. being born again. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You guys got it? When Jesus yeah, said be born again, he wasn't saying something new. He was affirming what the Old Testament already taught. My wow. people, you must have a new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. You must be changed. You must be made new. You must be born again. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So read yeah. that part again. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statute, statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Whoa, Naomi. Um, Verse 27 says, I will put my spirit in all of you yeah. who will then cause you not to sin, but obey me and walk in my ways. Yes. Mm, yeah. So you're telling me the Old Testament already announced that you need to be born again, made a new creature by the Holy Spirit, making you, making you new. I need the Holy Spirit to indwell you and empower you to obey me and not sin against me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. All in yes. the Old Testament. Wow. So, but my question would be, what kind of power characteristics must the Spirit have to take a group of sinners, make them alive, and work in them and empower them to reach a point they don't sin anymore? What kind of power must he have to do that? The power of God is to yeah. say, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. So he's omnipresent. He dwells all of God's people. Yeah. And he's yeah. Because he empowers all of them to yeah. walk worthy of the Lord. And yet my spirit, meaning there too, God and the spirit. Yeah. Hmm. Ezekiel 39, 29. 39, 29. Ezekiel 39, 29. And I will not hide my face from them anymore. For I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Whoa. Lord God. I will pour out my spirit on all of Israel. The Holy yeah. Spirit will come upon all of Israel, will empower all of Israel, make them all alive spiritually, not just physically, and then empower them to reach a point where they obey me and sin no more. The Holy yeah. Spirit is God Almighty. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, a few more references. We'll be wrapping it up because we try to do at least two hours. So we got about 30 minutes. And this will be that we did the series on. Trinity Old Testament. We can do more, but you got enough to show you. New Testament perfectly agrees with the Old Testament. God is triune, and both books contradict the Quran, proving Muhammad is a fraud. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the book of Micah. Let's go to Micah 2 7. Micah 2 7. You who are named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord restricted? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good? To him he walks uprightly. So wait, is the spirit of the Lord restricted, meaning limited? Yeah. No. no. You know what that means, right? Yeah. Yes. Restricted means is no. the spirit limited so that he can't no. do everything? No, mm. not at all. No. So that means the Holy Spirit is unlimited, which means he's infinite and therefore he's almighty. Yes. Amen. Yeah. You caught it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now Micah 3, verse 8. Micah 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Okay, I'm confused. You're telling me David, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Michael all knew it is the Spirit of Jehovah, the Holy Spirit, that was inspiring them, empowering them to preach mm -hmm. the truth without compromise? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't think you caught Micah 3 8. A sign, a sign that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. A sign, one of the signs, yeah. not the only sign. You have to have several signs. A sign that the Holy Spirit is filling you 
Notice Micah 3 8 again. Read it slowly. What did the Spirit of God empower Micah do without fear and shame? But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. A sign that the Holy Spirit is empowering you is that you are bold and not ashamed to condemn sin yeah. and tell sinners they better repent of their sin. A sign that you're filled with the Holy Spirit is like Micah, where you go to homosexuals and say, homosexuality is a sin, you better repent. Transgenderism is a sin, you better repent. Sex before marriage is a sin, you better repent. Adultery is a sin, you better repent. Murdering unborn children is a sin, you better repent. And do not care or fear what they'll do to you. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what Micah said? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 That's to be fair. It's the Spirit of God that gave me power mm -hmm. to proclaim what is just and do it boldly and yeah. tell Israel you are sinners who need to repent or God will destroy you and not care of the consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then what do you say about these preachers and teachers that are soft, effeminate, sissified, and capitulating with the world, trying to make the world happy because they don't want to offend thinners. We don't want to tell people they're thinning. Yeah. We don't want to tell them having sex before marriage is a thin. Oh, you know, if you're, are they really filled with the same Holy Spirit that filled Micah? <laughs> not, no. not at all. <laughs> kind of Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you know you are really filled with the Spirit. One of the signs, there are many. Another sign you're filled with the Spirit is that you worship the true God as He is, not the way you want Him to be. Yeah. And that you're not ashamed of that God or His will. Mm -hmm. Right? There it goes. I didn't make it up. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. So yeah. again, the prophets knew they needed the Holy Spirit to empower them, sustain them, and teach them and instruct them. Because without the Holy Spirit, they were nothing. Right? Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, now let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Seven, Almost 12. done. Zechariah 7, verse 12. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. So not it's only great. does Zechariah, before you yeah. finish it, not only does Zechariah know that the Holy Spirit is inspiring him, but he knows that the prophets before him were inspired by the Spirit of Jehovah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I read that verse one more time? I won't stop. You read all the way. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. So did you catch it? It is the Spirit of Jehovah that inspired Moses and the prophets to communicate the words of God and the law of God. And it's the Spirit of Jehovah that raised up prophets to warn them, you better repent and obey the law or God's wrath will come upon you. Mm. Yeah. So the Old Testament saints knew a lot more about the Holy Spirit than even modern scholars claim. Because if I get you a modern scholar, say, oh, no, no, the Spirit in the Old Testament wasn't developed. You, know, you can't prove he's a person who's... <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. Let God be true and every man a liar. You can right. take your PhD with the Quran and use it for toilet paper. Allahu Akbar. Yes. Here. <laughs> right. okay, so we see the pattern. The Spirit of God speaks, instructs, yeah. empowers the prophets. Without the Spirit, the prophets could not do what they do. Clear as day. Go to Psalm 140, 143, Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Now, in your translation, says your spirit is good. Now, what's the connection with your spirit is good and lead me on the land, uh, on the land of uprightness? Meaning that good spirit is the one that you give to me to lead me in a land of uprightness. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You caught it? Yes. Yeah. Your spirit is good. Therefore, lead me in a land. Of, in other words, Lord, empower me to walk righteously, not wickedly, and in the company of sinners by your spirit who's good. Yeah. Amen. yeah. That's why David, when he sinned, was afraid. Psalm 51.11. What was he afraid of? Psalm 51.11. Do not cast me away from your presence. 
and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You yeah. see? Yeah. Because of my sin of adultery and murdering the man, I deserve to be cut off from your face, no fellowship, and you take the, your Holy Spirit away from me. But please don't give me what I deserve. Because if yeah. you take away your Holy Spirit, it's over for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So you see, David and the prophets knew how important the Holy Spirit is for their life. They knew without the Holy Spirit, there is no life. Mm. Yeah. There is yeah. no life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Two more. And we're going to wrap it up. Let's go to Numbers 11. Let me now blow you away with Numbers 11. Numbers 11. When you get yeah. to Numbers 11, let me know. I'm there now. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you the context. Moses is so sick and tired of the complaining of the Israelites. If you read the chapter, we don't have time to read all of it, but I want you to read it when you have time. He is so angry and depressed because of 600,000 men, not counting women and children, in the wilderness who are complaining and grumbling, grumbling and whining and murmuring, and he can't handle it anymore. He gets to the point, he says to God, this is in the chapter, did I give birth to these people? In other words, am I responsible for them? They're not my kids. And then he says to God, you must really hate me to make me leader of these people. Hmm. He's so angry saying, I didn't give birth to them. I'm not responsible for them. You really must hate me because if you love me, you wouldn't make me a leader over a bunch of people like this. Yeah. No, that's what he says. Yeah. He gets so tired and complaining. God has mercy on him. He goes, all right, all right, I'll, I'll work a deal with you. The spirit that's on you, I will take some of that spirit that's on you, and I'm going to place it on 70 elders. So 70 elders will be empowered by the same spirit that empowers you to help you carry this burden. So I'm going to show you that. But as a side note, sometimes when I'm doing like sessions with Al Fadi or with David Wood and Naomi, I too feel like maybe God hates me, which is why I have to work with these people. <laughs> why me? <laughs> Next week, you're going to put a picture of me looking like 500 pounds, Naomi. <laughs> no, but I'm kidding. I'm playing with you. Anyway. Okay, so now, now I'm, I'm, I'm playing with you guys. But I want you to catch what the context is. The context is Moses is so tired and sick of his life. Yes. Because he can't stand the complaining. Now, can you imagine day in and day out in the wilderness? Yeah. Over 600,000 people complaining to you? No. You want to die, don't you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so God says, all right, you're not going to die. No, and I don't hate you. I love you. But you're not going to die because you're going to be the one who leads them. But I'm going to make a deal. Call the 70 elders of Israel. Let them come to the tent. Meet me at the tent, which is in front of the camp of the people. I will take some of that spirit on you and put it on them, and the spirit will empower them to help you in dealing with the people. Go to Numbers 11, 16 and 17, and see. So the Lord, yeah. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Okay, you see God cuts a deal with him. Yeah. The tent of the meeting is in front of the camp. Here's the camp of people in the wilderness, a multitude. There's so many of them. He goes, bring them to the front, to the tent. When they come to the tent, I will come down in a pillar of cloud where people will see the pillar of cloud visibly. Then when they come there, that spirit that empowers you, I will now put on them to empower them to work with you. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now keep in mind, there are 70. So now the 70 come to the tent, but two, me, dad, and Eldad are still in the camp. They don't get the memo. Hey, God wants to meet with you at the tent. There's somewhere in the crowd of people, a crowd so huge, it's humanly impossible to detect them. Yeah. So with that in mind, note what happens. Numbers 11, 24 to 29. I'm going to stop you at key points. Numbers 11, 24 to 29. Okay. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the 20, 70 men, sorry, 70 men of elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him 
and placed the same upon the 70 old elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. Pause. Yeah. Yeah. Notice the miraculous sign that God gave. A miraculous sign that God gave to the people who were seeing. These men are empowered by the spirit. It says they prophesy, but never did so again. Now, let me explain to you what it means. Prophesying means to proclaim. proclaim. When it says here, they prophesied, but never did so again. It cannot mean that they never proclaimed anything afterwards because that's why God empowered them by the spirit. All they were going to do is prophesy because the word prophesy means proclaiming. So all they were going to do for the next 40 years is proclaim God's will. So they kept prophesying after this. But here it says, whatever prophesying they uttered, they never did it that way again. Hmm. Now, why did they prophesy in an unusual manner and never did it that way again as a sign to these people? Here's the sign. These people are filled with the Holy Spirit, so you better listen to them because if you reject them, you reject the Spirit in them. Yeah. So the prophesying was such a manner that people realize, whoa, something's happening. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, are you getting it or no? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Similar. Here is the Old Testament version of Pentecost. Yeah. Just like the Spirit came down on the apostles in Acts 2 yeah. and empowered them to speak, proclaim, they prophesied in languages that were unknown to them miraculously and never did so after that. Here too, the same Spirit has come upon them, causing them to prophesy in a miraculous, unusual manner that the people could see, wow, something is happening. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, amen. Wow. Here is the Old Testament version of Pentecost. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, praise God. Did it sink in, guys, or no? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. amazing, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what kind of power must the Spirit have to take a group and empower them to do things miraculous, things they could not do unless the Spirit came upon them? Well, he's God Almighty, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it gets even more miraculous. You're going to get even more blown away how amazing the Holy Spirit is. Remember, there's over 600,000 people in the wilderness. So if Naomi was in the midst of them, I couldn't find her, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. If yeah. Chino and Naomi and you were in the crowd, I couldn't find you. And there's no, no you know, there's no microphones where, hey, Chino. You can't, right? <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Because I want you to keep in mind how amazing the Holy Spirit is. Now keep mm -hmm. reading from where you left off. Okay. Cool. But two men had remained in the camp. Mm -hmm. The name of one was Eldad and the name of the other, Medad. And the spirits rested upon them. Why are you talking about me dead? Me dead is dead. Why are you talking about me dead? No good. I'm kidding. So <laughs> my dad. me dead sounds like my dad. Read it again. I didn't yeah, mean to read it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop talking about me dead, all right? He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> yeah. And the spirits rested upon them. And they were among those listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Now start from the beginning again. Beginning because I cut you off because I want you to catch yeah, the point. El Dad and me yeah. dad did not go to the tent. They were in the midst of the camp of over 600,000 people, right? Yeah. Read it again. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirits rested upon them. Now they were among those listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle, yet they prophesied in the camp. Mm -hmm. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Did you catch 29? What does Moses wish? Read 29 again. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Notice, you wow. can't be a prophet without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Exactly. You, and you see the humbleness of Moses? Jo mm -hmm. He's telling Joshua, why are you zealous for me? It's not about me. Yeah. It's not about my position, my status, my fame. Mm -hmm. Don't be zealous about me. 
I wish they were all prophets who had the Holy Spirit instructing them. Then they wouldn't need me. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Because if they're all prophets, that means they're being taught directly by the Spirit. Yes. The Spirit is directly teaching them, communicating to them. Therefore, they don't need a human being to be used by the Spirit to teach them. That's right. Wow. And then my job is done and I can go home to be with the Lord and rest. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. See what he's saying? Yeah. So do you see how much they knew about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? Yeah. Mm. But you missed that. something. Yeah. But you missed something, though. It says, mm -hmm. it, me, dad, and Eldad were in the camp, which, humanly speaking, you could not see. But yeah. it says, yeah. as they were in the camp, and the other 70 were at the tent, when the Spirit came down on the 70, he then found them and came down on them at the same time and, and <clears throat> empowered both groups to prophesy at the same time in same two different time. locations. Yeah. yeah. Oh, praise wow. God. That's really wow. You understand? The Holy Spirit is not restricted to time yeah. or yes. space or place. Yeah. He is with you and finds you wherever you're at. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Wow. You got it? Because yes. it says they didn't go to the tent, they were in the camp. Humanly speaking, yeah. you can't see them. Right? Wow. Yeah, exactly. But as the Spirit empowered this group of 70 by the tent, he knew where they were, and because the Holy Spirit is not restricted to place, he yeah. filled this group and them at the same time and caused both groups in two different locations to prophesy. Wow. At the same time. Wow. You got it? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. And right. yeah, it must have been in an amazing way as well, considering that young man saw them in the huge group. Of and people. he had to, yeah, because he was there near them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then what did he have to do? Go run, tell Moses. Moses, yeah. 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 That means he was near enough to see the sign and he ran, Moses, hey, Moses, look, yeah. over here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In such yeah. a big group. Wow. Yeah. So, but notice what this tells you about the spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God is not restricted. Wherever you are, he's already there. He finds you where you're at because he's already there. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 12. Yeah. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 12. We have a few more re re references. We're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Jamal, you have to wait your questions after after this. Jamal, by the way, yeah. And after this, I got to do a Zoom with someone. So I'm going to have to rush out. So maybe we'll do Q&A. Yes. But go to Psalm 139, 7 to 12. Wherever you are, you're at, the Spirit is there. He finds you because he's already there where you're at. Yeah. 7 to 12. 7 to 12. Yes. Where where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? Did you catch it? Wherever you no, go, Naomi, nowhere. the spirit is there. You cannot escape the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. You're telling me the Old Testament they already knew this? Yeah. Yes. Very clearly. They already knew the Holy Spirit is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, creator, maker, life giver, sustainer, savior. Yeah. Yeah. Who's a person who speaks, instructs. Has emotions? Yes, clearly. Mm -hmm. All right, now go ahead, continue. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Even in hell, you're, he's there, huh? Yeah, yeah hell, even in hell. hell. Keep on. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost, uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Yeah. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. That's right. Darkness is just as bright as day before God, because okay. nothing's hidden from him or his spirit. So we just saw the spirit is omnipresent. Now, let's wrap it up by talking about the Trinity because I said the Holy Spirit creates, the Holy Spirit gives life, the Holy yeah. Spirit preserves, the Holy Spirit sustains. But I'm going to show you this is the work of the Trinity. Three and only three persons, because there's only three persons who are the one God. Yeah. Three and only three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, give life, preserve life, and sustain life. Watch the beautiful pattern of the Trinity by looking at the New Testament, because we're going to wrap it up. The Old Testament is now done. Let's look at a few references in the New Testament. And Lord willing, in the distant future, we may come back to the New Testament after we finish other topics. Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord okay, let's see who gives life according to the New Testament. Go to John 6, 63. 
Exist. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. So Jesus said, who gives life? The spirit. spirit. That's John 6, 63. Now, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Who also make, made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Yeah. So Paul agrees with his master. The spirit gives life, right? Mm. So here the spirit gives life. Now let me show you God the Father gives life. Go to 1 Timothy 6, 13 and 14. 1 Timothy 6, verse 13 and 14. Here God is the Father, not Jesus. Here God refers to the Father in this verse. First Timothy 6, 13, but read 14 so you can know that there God means the Father of Jesus, not Jesus. Yeah. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this com commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. So there God is distinct from Jesus, so that's God the Father, right? Yeah. Here, God the Father gives life to all things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now go to Acts 17, 24 to 25. Acts 17. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands mm. as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. So the God who gives life and breath to all things, therefore he doesn't need anyone, is the God that raised Jesus. So it's the Father again. How do I know? Because read Acts, 6, Acts 17, same chapter, 30 to 31. Okay. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he had, has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness, by the man whom he ordained, he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So the God who gives life and breath to all things is the God that raised that man to life from the dead. Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's God the Father. So God the Father gives life. The Holy Spirit gives life. Now let's see who else gives life. Go to John 5, 21. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. So the Son gives life to whom he wills? Yes. So the Father gives life. The Son gives life. The Holy Spirit gives life. Three and only three. Now you wonder why we're a Trinitarian. John 5, John 5, 25 and 26. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. So the Son, like the Father, has life in himself, meaning he is the one who is the source of life and gives life, which is why when the dead hear the voice of the Son of God, that all-powerful voice of the Son of God will make them alive. Wow. Wow. Yeah. John 10, John 10, 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. And they I give them eternal life. life? Yes, and I give them eternal life. Finish it. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Okay, now go to John 11, 25 to 26. This is Jesus speaking. John 11, 25 to 26. We're almost done. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So Jesus is the resurrection and the life. The life. Jesus gives life. Jesus has life in himself. And Jesus gives eternal life. And the Father gives life. And the Spirit gives life. We're almost done. Go to Colossians chapter 1. 15 to 17, speaking of Jesus, Colossians chapter 1, 15 to 17, we're going to wrap it up. 15 to 17, 17, yeah. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. 
For by him all things were created. So by heaven. Jesus, the firstborn, by Jesus, the firstborn, all things were what? Created. created. That Finishing. are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Everything exists for Jesus. Jesus created and gives life to everything and created everything for him, for himself. Wow. Now read 17. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. You're kidding me. In Jesus, that creative power, that energy needed to sustain all creation, give life to all creation, is in Jesus and comes from Jesus? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's sustaining all creation? Yeah. Hebrews 1.3. Hallelujah. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Wait, the sun, Naomi, is sustaining, upholding, preserving, alive? Yes. Everything, all creation by his all-powerful word, the sun is doing yes. this? Yes. yes. Yeah. And what does the son also do? When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And that's why John 1, 4, speaking of Jesus before he became flesh, John 1, 4, it says, In him, the word, was life, and that life is the light of men. So God the Father gives life, preserves all things alive. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ the Son gives life and preserves all things alive by his powerful word. The Holy Spirit gives life and preserves all things alive. And only these three, and these three alone, are set to do that. That's why we're Trinitarian. And Jesus is alive. He cannot die. He is real. He really lives. And we really live. And we will really not die because Jesus is alive in the Bible's his word. We love you, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, wash us in your blood. Lord Jesus, fill us with your love. Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit. Save us, our loved ones. So we never deny you, betray you, or shame you, Lord Jesus, but love you and obey you even when no one's watching. Yes. And Lord Jesus, give us the health we need to serve you. Bring my daughters to me, and Lord Jesus, provide for these ministries. Yes, and we do it with integrity and love you even unto death because we do not die, but we live forever because you are alive. Amen. And because yes. you live, we live also. We love you, Son of God. Amen. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus, sooner than later. Amen. Lord bless nice I have to Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes. No problem. Now, me, next week, Bring a more uglier picture of me. And then secondly, <laughs> here we're talking about the Trinity, and we had a good crowd, 135, praise God. Yes. But how dare you come and watch David Wood over 400 people? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> right, God bless you guys. Yeah. Yes, yeah, God bless you. God bless you, no problem. Keep yeah. praying for yeah. my health, my holiness, and my yeah. daughter. Yeah. 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 Pray, yeah. Yeah. pray for you. Thank God you. Bless you. Yeah. Just want to uh, read the message of uh, Hidden Rose So before we... Yeah. Well, so yeah, today is my two month anniversary as a Christian and people that say Jesus is not God are liars as I didn't need a Christian to show me this and scripture makes it clear one God is three persons. Amen. 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 Thank, Amen. You. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Hidden Rose. Hidden Rose. She's a Somali believer, Somali uh, new believer. And we have so many new believers who are coming here, Somali Christians, Somali Muslims, even those a uh, uh, guy. Muslim, his name was Muslim. He said, mm. I, first time I see like Somali Christians. He was saying, Lord, Somali Christians. <laughs> so, and you know, Jesus is saving his people. Please pray for the new believers. And uh, we love you so much, Hidden Rose. We love you and we pray for you. And one day, God willing, you will come here and share your testimony with our brothers yes. and sisters. Yeah. yeah, please pray for all the Somalis mm -hmm. to come and to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. There's no other way to be saved. It's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank yeah. you so much for being with us. Yes. And yeah, my God bless may, you all. May, may, you yeah, may God bless you all. We thank you all yeah. uh, for being with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was amazing yeah. uh, session, and we benefit all of us. Hmm. Yeah. We will yeah. keep doing that every Friday. Sam will be with us, and mm. uh, we'll teach. Yeah, we'll teach us all. So we need we need a teaching of uh, our... Yeah, our, our faith, our Bible, and all yeah. things. So that, yeah, that's and also subscribe if you are not subscribed yeah. yet. Subscribe, like, and share the channel. Mm. So praise God, we are doing together. My God yeah. bless you all. Yeah, yeah. thank we you very you. much, and see you soon. God we bless you. you all. Bye -bye. Love you. Bye bye.